to the place of grace. Hallelujah. Welcome to the place of grace. Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're welcome. You're welcome to the place of grace where whoever can be healed of whatever. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord God. We thank you. Thank you so much for coming to our service tonight. We are here to take the devil's head off his body and feed his body to the birds. Y'all know that's my favorite scripture. My favorite scripture. That's my favorite one because you know I'm a sniper. Like y'all, I'm a sniper. So you, you ain't come to play. You didn't come to tiptoe through the tulip. You came to do war. The devil thinks that he is winning and the devil needs to know that you are a liar. You will not win. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. So you need to know that the, the notice that we serve to you on our knees is still activated. In the name of Jesus, it's still activated. Tell your, tell your neighbor, it's activated. I said something. Bishop McClendon said you need to say something. I said something. I said the devil was a lie. I said you won't touch my children. I said that I win. I said that greater is he that's in me. I said I'm healed. I don't care what it looks like, what it sounds like. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm delivered. I'm set free. And guess what else? My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. How about that? Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray just a few minutes, and then I have a, a specific declaration that I want to give you. It's a good one, too. It's a real good one. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people of God today. I thank you, Lord God, that you shower them with all of their desires, Lord. They are faithful. Just like you are faithful, they are faithful. We thank you in the name of Jesus, God, that you cover them with the blood, Father. Even those that are watching online, that are looking for a designated place. This is a designated place, God. This is a great church. This is a great house, Lord God. So, we thank you for the family that you have joined us with. We thank you for the sound that comes out of this house. We thank you for the praise. We thank you, Lord God, for the word from the man of God that's coming out. It's not coming out like everybody else. It's fresh, Father. And we thank you in the name of Jesus that we've been chosen. We have been chosen. We didn't choose to come here. You chose for us to be here in this designated place where healing takes place, where prosperity is being known. Lord God, where people are walking in love, we decree and declare what we believe. We believe the report of the Lord, that we're walking in love, that we care about our neighbors, that we care about the church, we care about the people who may be hurt, those that may be wounded, we care about them. We stretch our arms and we hug them and remind them that we love you no matter what, no matter what it looks like. You are not by yourself. We are with you. The Bible says Sunday. The Bible says he sent them out two by two. So whenever one was weak, we can lift each other up. So you don't ever have to feel like you're by yourself. Somebody is lifting you up. You might not even know who they are, but they're lifting you up because they hear from God. They hear God. They see your face. They hear God and they are lifting you up. And when you get lifted up, the devil can't reach you. And you got somebody praying for you every day all around the world when intercessors are praying. They praying for you. They might not know your name, but they know that you belong to God. You are God's representative. You are there to take control. You are there to make sure that they make it. You hold them up. You hold up their arms. God, we give you praise and we give you honor because you have called us for such a time as this. As the world is rocking and rolling and shaking, Father, we have the anointing that, that this thing that is crooked, we have the anointing to make it straight. And we make it straight by what we say. We don't complain about what it's doing. We don't complain about what you look like. We don't complain that you don't know if you're a boy or a girl. We don't complain about it. We go in the secret closet. We get on our knees and we decree and declare that the blood ministers to you, that you run into a, a saint of God that has 
has the word of God that has that pitcher of water that causes you to change your mind that says, I know that I'm a man. I know that I'm a woman. And I thank God for those that God is sending out on the battlefield. Let me tell you, they call it a battlefield. But the last time I looked, we won the battle. We won the battle. The devil is defeated. He is defeated and he is under our feet and there's no weapon, not one weapon formed against us that can prosper. That's what the Bible says. That's what his word says. And he watches over his word to perform it. And you know he gonna perform it because you wake up in the middle of the night praying for people. People that you don't even know. Faces just popping up, just popping up. And you praying for them. Don't you know that that's a part of your increase? That's a part of your increase. Tell your neighbor that's a part of my increase. Tell your neighbor I'm getting rich just because I care about you. I'm getting rich because I pray about you. I'm getting rich because I pray about your child. I pray about your husband. I pray about your business. I pray about your mother. I pray about your father. And the Lord loads us up with riches. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Somebody needs your fragrance. Somebody needs your word. Somebody needs a touch from you. You don't have to know what the situation is, but the Father knows. All you got to do is obey. All you got to do is go lay your hands. All you got to do is go prophesy like the 70 elders that Bishop was talking about on Sunday. Every last one of them prophesied. He didn't call them a prophet, but they prophesied. So get up out of your seat. Get up and go prophesy to somebody. Do it now. Prophesy to somebody. That's what they did. All of them were able to prophesy. Prophesy life. Prophesy increase. Prophesy. They will live and not die. Prophesy that money is coming to them. Prophesy that their family is whole. Prophesy greater is he that's in us. Prophesy increase. 
So you just prophesied, right? So you're not going to stop prophesying, right? And you, you find someone else to talk to. Find somebody else and prophesy that thing. Bishop McClendon said we had to say something. It was 70 elders. And the Bible said they all prophesied. He didn't call them a prophet. He said they all prophesied. So what we do today, right now, you have a right to prophesy to anything that's coming up against you, that's coming up against your family, that look like it's trying to sneak out. You got a right to prophesy to it. Stop it and put it back. You have a right. You can prophesy to it. Don't get caught up with, oh, I'm not a prophet. You are a man or a woman of God. That's what you are. And you have the, his image and his likeness. You have a right to speak like that. You don't tip around in the garden. The garden belongs to us. We ain't tipping around unless I'm going to kick the devil out. We ain't tipping around. This is our house. It's a designated place. And you will see it soon, completely full. And you will be right here to say, welcome to the place of grace. The glory of the Lord increase, the glory of the Lord increase, the glory of the Lord increase, as we prophesy, the glory of the Lord increase, 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 the glory of the Lord as we praise, the glory of the Lord fills this temple. The glory of the Lord increase as we pray. The glory of the Lord increase as we pray. The glory of the Lord increase. The glory of the Lord is His goodness. The glory of the Lord increase. It be manifest on the earth. The glory of the Lord increase. Hey, The glory of the Lord increase. The glory of the Lord increase. Hey, the glory of the Lord increase. The glory of the Lord is glory of the Lord. Healing is glory. Glory of the Lord. Provision is glory. Glory of the Lord. Healing is glory. Glory of the Lord. His provision is glory. Glory of the Lord. His presence is glory. Glory of the Lord. He is glory. Glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. bless the Lord. His praise will continually be in our mind. He is a good God. Hey! The glory of the Lord increase, increase, manifest the glory, increase, increase. And 
as we praise him, increase, increase, hallelujah, yes, yes, we came to pray, we came to lift his name on high, we came to declare his promises, we came to declare his glory manifest, yes, hallelujah, the glory of the Lord increase, the glory of the Lord increase, hallelujah, hallelujah, can you turn to your neighbor and say, I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord.
great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. One last
Celebration of praise. Hallelujah, Jesus, we bless you. Thank you for your goodness and for your mercies that are new every morning. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord, everybody. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We acknowledge there is no God like you. There is no God but you. As we gather now to enter into this season, of prayer we ask that you would grant us supernatural access into your plans your purposes and your means of accomplishing those plans in the earth grant us that as an instrument in your hand we may be used to advance the purposes of your kingdom in this moment in the name of Jesus and if you agree with that say I agree now look at your neighbor and say, it is so. Amen. Clap your hands and thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Go ahead and be seated in the tabernacle. And if you're watching us and joining with us in this prayer force prayer hour here on the first day of March 2024, uh, we are grateful that you are sharing with us and that you have determined to be a part of these times of prayer. As I've said uh, over these last several gatherings that we have been together, the Spirit of the Lord directed us that on the first day of every month, we would gather together here at the Place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center in a time and a season of concerted prayer. The Lord said to me that there were certain things now that he is escalating in the earth and you and I, as a part of his remnant, are to be praying and agreeing, taking our place as watchmen, if you will, on the wall and declaring what it is the Spirit of the Lord is saying and desiring to do. Once again, when God has purpose to do something in the earth, Again, the scripture says in one place, God will do nothing in the earth except he first reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And I've said it many times, that is not because the prophets get it done. It is because God will do nothing in the earth except he work with his word to get it done. Anything that God is going to do, he's going to work with his word to get it done. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. So the prophetic responsibility in one degree is to make sure that the word of God, the mind of God, 
the thoughts and the purposes of God are being declared so those so his so God's people have that word and they can pray it remember this grab your neighbor's hand squeeze it tight say remember this oh boy that was weak uh, well, grab your neighbor's hand squeeze it tight say remember this see remember this that anytime God is going to do anything in the earth He's going to put what he has purposed or planned to do on the heart of someone who will pray his kingdom come and his will be done. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. Uh, and, and, and God's not just he's, God's not just going to do things. He's going to work with his people to get them done. And so as we come together, two things important. Number one. Uh, again, prayer force, something God called us to do. And I'm expecting those of you that are committing to this time with us to let us know. And right there at bishopmcclendon.com, you can connect with the prayer force as we are raising up these intercessors. I remember back in 2015 when God really um, spoke to me about this and told me to uh, engage in it. He told me at that time to raise up 15,000. We got that, met that, and uh, we are extending that now. And so I want to make sure that you let us know that you're connecting with us. What do you mean first fruit? Again, there is a scriptural principle. The Bible says if the first fruit is holy, then the lump is holy. This is why offering to God first things is so key and so critical uh, in the old covenant God reveals himself uh, as what I call a reckoning God he told the children of Israel when you bring this I will reckon it as the whole of the threshing floor or the whole of the wine press in other words God says when you bring me the first I reckon it I, I, I account it as if you have given me everything how many of you want God on your whole month every day in your month and so one of the things the Spirit of the Lord said to me prophetically he said if you will do this I'm going to begin to move in your month in the month of the people of God in a strategic and a significant way and I believe the Lord is doing it already if you are in agreement say amen and so uh, each time I'm going to encourage you to share with us. Now let's get to prayer because I don't want to belabor the moment here. And as we prepare to go into the season of prayer, one of the things we always want to do is come into agreement around the word of the Lord. And so I want to share with you what the spirit of the Lord has laid up on us for tonight to get done in the spirit go to Ezekiel 43 with me very quickly go to the book of Ezekiel chapter number 43 I'm going to try to get through this rather expeditiously and get to prayer but I need us to come into agreement nudge your neighbor and say agreement 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 is the key Paul said we do not pray as those that beat the air in other words we're not just aimlessly out there in the spirit flailing our arms and trying to get things done no 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 what we are doing what he is doing uh, what we are doing is making sure that we are praying God's Word see the Bible says all of the promises are in him yes and in him Amen. If you go through scripture and you and you uh, you read prayers that got uh, answers from God, you will find that the greatest prayers that got immediate answers were prayers where people put God in remembrance of his word. They literally reminded God, you said this, you said this, you said this, and responses came. Look at your neighbors and say, God watches over his word to perform it and so it's important that we are putting God in remembrance of his word in connection with the things he's placing in our spirits 
to pray for. Those are things that he desires to get done in the earth. Ezekiel 43. I'm going to begin reading at verse number 1. And for those of you uh, that are at the screens, let me tell you. I'm going to go Ezekiel 43, verses 1 through 7. And then I'm going to go 10 through 12. And then I'm going to go to John chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. And then I'm going to go to Daniel 10. And I'm going to skip around there some as we prepare to pray tonight and get some stuff accomplished in the Spirit. Look at Ezekiel 43 and verse number 1. It says, Afterward, the Lord brought me to the gate, the gate that faces towards the east, and behold, the glory of the Lord God of Israel came from the way of the east. Let me stop right here and just uh, and remind you what where we are. Ezekiel, for several chapters now, if you read the prophecy of Ezekiel, he has been caught up in a vision of God where God is showing him the restoration of the temple in Jerusalem. You must remember in Ezekiel's day, in the prophecies of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, the children of Israel have been taken captive and carried away to Babylon. They are in Babylonian captivity. They are in Babylonian exile. When Nebuchadnezzar came in, he wrecked the city, wrecked the temple, took the uh, vessels, destroyed everything. And again, the prophets Ezekiel and Jeremiah there were some others but Ezekiel and Jeremiah uh, uh, primarily had the responsibility of prophesying to God's people while they were in captivity pay attention and to uh, prophesy to them about the restoration that God was going to bring after the 70 years of captivity wave at me if you understand so while the captivity is still going on uh, God gives Ezekiel this vision of the restoration of the temple and he takes him and if you read it it's several chapters of him just talking about how large this is what this looks like and it's another one of those uh, passages in the scripture sort of like uh, uh, Exodus you know like 20 through 33 where uh, the whole thing is just chapters about the initial tabernacle but uh, uh, Ezekiel is seeing a, a similar vision concerning the restoration wave at me if you understand somebody say restoration restoration concerning the restoration of the temple and so God is taking him through the various corridors and the various areas of the temple in Ezekiel 43 uh, that vision is coming to a culmination and again I was reading it not long ago and I was trying to skip through it again and God said no 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 read it all because it's important and so in 43 God has taken him through most of it and now the glory of God is coming back to the temple he says and behold the glory of God of the God of Israel came from the way of the east his voice was like the sound of many waters and the earth shone with his glory go down to verse number five the spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court and behold the glory of the Lord filled the temple now remember Ezekiel is seeing this in a vision it is a vision of the coming restoration wave at me if you understand what I just said so he says, the, the, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Then I heard him speaking to me from the temple while a man stood beside me. And he said to me, son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet. For I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. Now go down to verse number 10. Nudge your neighbor and say, pay attention. All of this is important. All of this is important. Verse number, verse number 10. God is speaking now to Ezekiel. Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel. 
that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. Now, once again, if you've read the chapters preceding this, you see the specificity and the glory and the majesty of the restoration of this temple. And so God is telling his prophet, paint a picture of the restoration. Let them see how glorious it's going to be. Foreshadow what I'm getting ready to do so that they will be zealous for what is to come and unsatisfied with where they've been, what they've done, and where they are. Wave at me if you understand what's going on here. So now watch this. He says, Son of Man, describe the temple to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern. Now watch this. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them, go, oh, make known to them the design of the temple and its arrangement. In other words, God by his spirit is moving now and he is looking for a response from the heart of his people and the response is going to tell him who is qualified for the move. You're not listening to me. He, he said, I'm coming now. And if they're ashamed of where they are. And we're not talking about, you know, uh, being ashamed and, 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 you know, beating your chest and oh, saying you're a wretch. No, no, no. We're talking about being dissatisfied with where you are when you see what's coming. And doing what is necessary to make the move. This is all in the theme of dedication we've been talking about. Watch this. Verse 11, and if they are ashamed of all that they've done, make known to them the, the, the design of the temple. And it's Do you see this? God, God said only certain people are going to know what this is going to look like. He said if they're ashamed, then let them know the design. If, 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 if they make the right response, then let them get a glimpse of this. Its exits, its entrances, its entire design, and all its ordinances, all its forms, and all its laws. Write it down in their sight so that they may keep it, its whole design. Somebody say whole design. And all its ordinances and perform them. Now watch this. Here's the key. This is where we're getting. This is the law of the temple. Now, watch it. What, what? This is the law of the temple. Now, again, this temple has not manifested yet. This is the temple of the coming glory. It's the temple of the coming restoration. God is showing it to the prophet. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And he says, this is the law of the temple. Watch this. The whole area surrounding the mountaintop is most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. I need you to say that out loud. Say, this is the law of the temple. Now don't, now don't come at me and we're delivered from the law. That's not what's being talked about here. We're being talked about the principle, the rule. This is the governing principle of what I'm getting ready to do. This is the law of the temple. The whole area surrounding the mountaintop is most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. Now, I've been talking to you about God's dedicated places, that God is dedicating places where he is going to move, where his spirit is going to do certain things. I believe this house is one of them. I believe there are places in the United States and places in the nations of the earth that God has already determined to land. Y'all aren't hearing me. See, God is omnipresent, yes, but he doesn't land everywhere. He doesn't rest everywhere. Are y'all here? God is omnipresent, but when he decided to manifest a Messiah, he chose a place and landed. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell them God is still choosing places and landing there. And wherever he chooses to land, supernatural things are going to happen there. Now watch this. Here's the principle. Here's what we're going to pray. Here's the principle. God said the principle of, of this coming move, of this restoration, is the whole area surrounding the mountaintop is most holy. And when I was meditating on this, the Spirit of God said, Son, do you understand it? I said, well, Lord, I think so. 
He said, here's what I'm telling you. I am widening the territory of my holiness. I am expanding the territory of my holiness. What do you mean by that? See, in the temple, only the inner court was the most holy place. You had the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies. The third dimension in there was the most holy place. God says the law of this temple is the whole mountaintop's going to be holy. No, you didn't get it. The whole mountaintop is going to be holy. Lay your hand on your brother, lay your hand on your sister, and tell them this. This is the word of the Lord. Boy, y'all are talking soft. Tell them this is the word of the Lord. The whole area, the whole territory around you and everything you have is going to be holy, sanctified, distinct, other than, not subject to regular laws, not subject to regular rules, not subject to regular activity. Wherever you are, supernatural things are going to happen. Tell your neighbor, God is widening the territory that he inhabits. Are y'all listening to me? God said, I'm going to widen the territory now that I inhabit. I'm not just going to be in one little place. I'm expanding it. Now, this has to do with uh, the, the expansion uh, and I gotta you know there's stuff I gotta teach here it's talking about widening the area widening the understanding and widening the territory the Lord was speaking to me about geographically in other words he's saying I, I'm, I'm going to manifest my goodness now in places that people don't expect do you get it Look at your neighbor and say, God is widening the territory of his manifestation. He's going to start showing up, not only in his designated places, but everything around those places is about to spring forth, is about, y'all aren't hearing me. God's going to land in your house and sanctify the whole block. Ah, now the Lord said we need to pray this. We need to pray for the expansion of his manifestation. And for those of you that are praying with me in other nations, in other cities, those of you that are uh, men and women of God who are stewarding ministries, if your place is a place where God has chosen in this move to land, and if you're one of those, you know who you are. If, 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 if you are one of those places, understand everything around you is about to increase and expand. Are you still here? Go to John chapter number 5. That's the first thing the Lord said that we were to pray tonight. The expansion of his territory. This has to do with revival. Go to John chapter 5 and verse number 8. I'm giving them to you now and then we're going to go in the spirit and get some stuff done. John chapter 5 and verse number eight this is again the the passage of scripture uh from which the place of grace and our vision is taken i've been ministering on it throughout the month of february but now we need to pray something look at verse number eight it says then jesus said to him rise take up your bed and walk and immediately the man was made well took up his bed and walked and that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, it's the Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to carry your bed. But he answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Now watch this. Verse number 12. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. So here's a man who has been healed by Jesus, but doesn't know who Jesus is. Are you there? Now I've said this to you before. Get ready because God is about to show up in the lives of people who don't even know who he is. He's going to be good to them. And then he's going to reveal who he is to them after he heals them. 
after he blesses them, after he delivers them, after he cancels a death sentence. Are you still here? After their children get restored, he's going to be good to them. And then he's going to reveal to them who he is. Touch three people and ask them, are you ready for that? Are you, are you ready for people who don't know Jesus to encounter Jesus? And you have to explain to them what happened. Watch this. Now that's why the corporate gathering of saints is going to be so important in the coming days. Because the corporate gathering of saints is not going to be the place where people come to get saved. It's going to be the place where people who got saved during the week follow you. To find out what happened to them. To find out more. And, 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 and the Lord, he showed me something here that's powerful. Notice this, verse 12. It says, they asked him, uh, who is the man who said, take up your bed and walk? But the Bible says the man said, I, I, don't, I don't know who he was. And Jesus had withdrawn uh, from the midst of him. Now watch this. W watch it. It, it, it says, but the one who healed said, verse 13, he didn't know who it was where Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place then afterwards somebody say afterward afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him see you have been made well sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you now get this the man has encountered Jesus but he doesn't know who he is Jesus has withdrawn, but he finds him in the temple. Isn't it interesting that the man goes to the temple even though he doesn't know the God who just healed him? Touch somebody and tell them that's about to happen. People are going to come looking for God where you are. Now watch this. It says Jesus found him in the temple. And it doesn't say the man found Jesus. It says Jesus found him, and, and, and the temple there, uh, the, the, the Greek word literally means in the dedicated place. He, he found him in the place that had been dedicated, and in that place, he sees how well he's been made. No, you didn't get what I just said. He sees how well he has been He He said, no, let me read it. He says, see, you have been made well. So now get it. He has been healed. But he doesn't have a revelation of how well he is. No, you didn't get what I just said. He, he doesn't see that he's well. No, you're not listening to me. He has experienced a miracle, but he, does, he, he doesn't yet see that he's been made whole. In the temple, he sees that he's been made well grab your neighbor's hand squeeze it real tight and tell him when you see that you've been made well nobody can convince you to stay sick anymore when you see how well Jesus has made you how perfectly he has finished the work when you see what he's done see there's a lot of people who have encountered Jesus but they haven't seen how well they are. They don't have a revelation of what he finished for them. The Lord said that this is something that is about to manifest. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is about to increase in the lives of people. And they're going to see how well they are. Are, are y'all here? See, when, when you're walking around thinking, well, I'm just this, and I'm just that, and I need this, and I need... But, but, see, religion has convinced you you need more of God. You don't. <laughs> you can't get any more of Him than you received when Christ came. It's not more of God you need. It's less of you in His way. And, no, you didn't get what I just said. It's not more of God that you need. It's less of you hindering his flow. Are you there? And see, that's what happens in the tabernacle. It's not you find Jesus. He finds you. He starts showing you what about you needs to be 
put to death and moved out of the way and submerged so he can flow. Lay your hand on yourself and say, that is happening in this season, in this season that's happening. Now, now, go, go quickly, go, go quickly. And the Lord said, we need to pray this. Go to John 16 very quickly. Go, now this, now, and I hope you're connecting these things. Are you connecting this? I'm almost done. We're about to go into prayer. Go, go to John 16. This is a work of the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can do this. <sighs> Preaching can't do to it. Bible study can't do it. Only the Holy Spirit can do it. And that means the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge is going to have to be released on purpose. Are y'all here? Lay your hands up on yourself and say, I will get this. Because I'm about to take you now into a place of a little depth in scripture so we can pray accurately are you still here I said are you still here uh, John 16 John 16 go there very quickly John 16 and I want to read just a few verses from John 16 because this is a work of the Holy Spirit look at John 16 and verse number 7 John 16 7 Jesus is speaking and he says we're gonna pray this when he he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, lift your hands and say, he has come. Say it again. He has come. Now, now once again, when Jesus is speaking, the Holy Spirit has not yet been given in the earth as he is now. For Jesus has not yet been glorified. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39. He says, he that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It goes on to say, this spake he of the spirit that those believing on him would receive. Are you there? But the Holy Spirit had not yet been given for Jesus had not yet been glorified. So when Jesus is glorified, his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating, then he sends the Holy Spirit. That's Acts chapter 2. Now the Holy Spirit is present as a resident in the earth. I need you to stay here and understand this now. This is key to what we're getting ready to pray. Now the Holy Spirit is present and he is a resident. Before Jesus reconciled all things back to God, the Holy Spirit could only visit and leave. That's why you're not listening. That's why you're not listening. He couldn't stay in the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. That's why the anointing would come on the prophet, the priest, and the king. And, and, and where the anointing oil was, the Holy Spirit was legally allowed to come and rest. Are you here? But he could not remain. So the Spirit of the Lord would come upon people. Are you there? Get stuff done. You remember Samson, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord would come on him and he would go to the Philistines and it would lift. He doesn't lift off of you. He lives on the inside of you and me because now he is legal as a resident because the planet has been reconciled back to the Creator. Now why is that important? I'm not trying to wow you with revelation. I'm trying to show you some. He said, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Who will do it? He will do it. Not you, not me, not the not church. The Holy Spirit will do it. Are you there? And it goes on to say why? He will convict of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. He says, of sin because they do not believe on me of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. What did Jesus just say? He said the, the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding when he is come, well he's here when he has come he will convict of sin 
of sin because they do not believe on me. So the Holy Spirit will convict people of the need to believe on Jesus Christ. See, my preaching doesn't do that. The Word of God goes and the Holy Spirit works with the Word. That's why I tell preachers all the time, you got to preach the Word. You can't preach sermons. The Holy Spirit doesn't work with sermons. The Holy Spirit works with the Word of God. So if you are theorizing, intellectualizing, philosophizing, and entertaining, the Holy Spirit has nothing to work with. But if you are releasing God's Word, He works with the Word. Are you there? Now notice, He will convict of sin because they do not believe on me of righteousness what does that mean of right standing of a right relationship he will convict of right and wrong see right now we have a generation that has no concept of right and wrong are you listening to me you're not hearing me if it feels good do it this is my truth that's your truth okay you have a right to your truth and I have my truth no 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 you don't have a truth the word is truth and if you disagree with the word then that is your opinion it's not the truth that's your experience it's not the truth but how do you convince someone that what you're saying is true and they're wrong look at your neighbor and say you can't only the Holy Spirit can which means he has to be released by the church to do it I need you to pay attention to me Jesus said when he comes he'll do it so he has come why isn't he doing it okay Jesus said when he comes he will do it he has come why isn't it happening because the church is not releasing him to do it they are not releasing him to do it by their preaching and they are not releasing him to do it by their praying if God said he'd do it then the church has to release him to do it he will not do it unless somebody in the earth releases him to do it. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say, this is the authority you have. No, 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 no. Say, this is the authority you have. Stop praying for God to save your children. Release the Holy Ghost on them to reprove of sin of righteous stop praying for God to save your city release the Holy Ghost to reprove of sin of righteousness and stop praying for God to send a revival to your nation release the Holy Ghost to convict of sin of righteousness and judgment we're gonna pray it and he's gonna do it because somebody put God in remembrance of his word look at your neighbor say it's not tough you just got to read the book and say what he says that's it now watch this let me explain this to you just a little further the Bible says he will convict of sin because they do not believe on me he said there is one sin he's going to deal with and is the sin of not believing on the finished work of Jesus are you there that's where it starts you don't you don't need you don't need to you don't need to you don't need for people to be convicted that homosexuality is a sin you don't need for them to be convicted that 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 being addicted is you don't need for them to be convicted of all the stuff that religion is trying to get you to convince them of you release the Holy Spirit to convict them about the fact they don't believe on Jesus and when they start believing on him 
he'll start cleaning the temple. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, this is not hard. We just need to do what Jesus said and stop trying to do what the Holy Ghost is supposed to do. Watch this. He said the second thing, my God, I feel the anointing here. He said the second thing he will convict of is uh, of righteousness. In other words, he will let a person see that there is a standard. Am I the only person who believes this? He, he will let a person see there is a standard for living. There's a right way and a wrong way. You can preach to them, talk to them, yell at them, cuss at them, convict them, try to guilt them. None of that will work. You loose the Holy Ghost on them. He'll deal with them in the middle of the night. He'll keep them up. He'll let them not be able to rest till they turn on something. And the message of the gospel comes to them at 3 a.m. in the morning. Look at your nose. Know, that's Holy Ghost work right there. Woo! I'm excited. Because the Holy Ghost is about to show up in people's bedrooms, living rooms, bathrooms, buses, planes, trains, and automobiles. He's about to show up and do his work. Are you still here? And then he said, boy, this is powerful. He said, third thing he'll do is he will, he will convict of judgment. We're going to pray these three things. And Lucy Holy Ghost said, I got to show you one other thing and we're going to pray. Of judgment. What is it? He said that the prince of this world is judge this is what the holy spirit will do and this is the miracle of his ministry and operation he will convince a person who is bound that the power that is holding them has been judged has been defeated you're not listening to me he will convince someone who for years has believed they can't change they can't be different they can't stop this they can't get over it they can't do without it the Holy Spirit will come in a minute and he'll let you know that thing that you thought you couldn't get free of I have already defeated that thing I'll never forget, years ago I was reading this and, and the Holy Spirit, he showed me, he said, son, he said, the way to make this plain is the Holy Spirit will, will go into prison cells and show people who are walking around in cells that the door is open. Do you get it? They're walking around in a prison of addiction or a prison of, uh, 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 of immorality or a prison of... And the Holy Spirit will come and say, Door's open. You can leave. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say, only he can do that. Now let me, let, let, let me explain something. Here, lay your hands up on your brother, your sister, until we're about to go deep now. And I'm running out of time, so we got to get into prayer. But you have to know this. You, you have to know this. Are, are, are you with me? You, you, you have to know this. Now, 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 lay your hand on somebody and say, you will get this tonight. You will. And, and, and tell them, even if your mind struggles with it a bit, your spirit will get it. Go, uh, 
Go to Ephesians 1, verse 17, and I need you to connect this with what I'm about, with what I just said. Paul is praying, and he's, he says, uh, well, let me start at 15. He says, therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. So Paul is telling the Ephesians, I have been praying this for you. He said, I don't cease to make mention of you in my prayers. And here's what I've been praying, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the Spirit. of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened and that you know now I gotta connect something here to you when Paul says that what Paul knows is that that prayer is a prayer that releases angels because the angels of God are the spirits of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. I need you to hear me now. See, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And spirits of wisdom and revelation are under the authority of the spirit of truth. Now you say, Bishop, how can you do this? Because what, what I'm about to, what we're about to do and what I need you to leave here with is the knowledge of your authority to command angels once you know what the will of God is you say Bishop McClendon you're getting into wacky stuff now no I'm getting into the authority the believer has to know that he and has that she has in this hour cause without it we're not gonna get the work done I'll wait I'll wait. I'll wait for you to process it. I'll wait for you to look at me crazy. I'll wait for you to figure it out. Now, how do you know, Bishop McClendon, that spirits of wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding are angelic beings? See, there are, <laughs> there are angels assigned to minister wisdom. There are angels assigned to minister revelation. There are angels. Daniel chapter 10. Just, 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 just. just. See, listen, here, see, here's what I found out. When we know what to pray for, it doesn't take long to pray. One, one of the greatest, the greatest time in prayer is the preparation to pray. Because the Bible says that the promises are in him, yes and amen. So when you pray the word, you can go on knowing it's done. You don't need to stay in there, oh Lord, oh Lord, please come in the room. No, 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 no. When I pray the word, it's done. You still here? Now watch this. God help me. Watch this. Daniel chapter 10. <sighs> 
Are you with me? Daniel chapter 10, uh, verses 1. I'm going to read 1 through 7. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed. Everybody say a message was revealed. Is that revelation? So that's revelation knowledge. A message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed, but the appointed time was long. And he understood the message. Okay, so he got revelation and understanding. Stay with me. And had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, so he was fasting. Go down to verse number four. Now, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the river, I lifted my eyes, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold of Euphaz, his body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms like feet. This is not a human. This is an angelic being. Are you still here? The sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. Go down to verse 9. Yet I heard the sound of his words. So whatever this being was, was speaking words to Daniel in the spirit. No one else saw them, but Daniel was hearing and seeing. And whatever the angel, this being was speaking, was giving Daniel revelation and understanding. Are you in the room? I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face like a trance with my face to the ground. Now watch this, verse 11. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. Look at verse 12. Do not fear, Daniel, for the first, from the first day you set your heart to understand. So you wanted to understand something and I have come to bring you understanding because I am the spirit of revelation and understanding connected to what you need to know. Are you in the room? Watch this. And I have come because of your words. In other words, because you were saying God's word, I've come. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. So now we know it's an angel. He's dealing with principalities on his way. Look at verse 14. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen. This is a spirit of understanding. This is a spirit of revelation. Because he get. are you still here? See, I want you to understand that while you are praying, you are listening and being dealt with by angels. Are you there? Watch this. I've come to make you understand. Look at verse 15. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground, became speechless, and suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Are you still here? Watch this. Then, verse 18, then again, one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. So now we've, so now we've just encountered a spirit of utterance giving him the ability to speak and a spirit of strength that's isn't that what Paul prayed that you would be <laughs> I've been praying for you that the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him would be given to you are y'all still here Watch this. Verse 19. Uh, and again, these are different, these are different spirits. Because one looked a certain way, he said, then another one came and did this, and another one came and did that. And, and, and strengthened me. 
And he said, oh man, great beloved, fear not. Peace be to you, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened. What? No, you didn't get it. He spoke and I was strengthened. No, you're not listening. His ministry, his words strengthen me. That's why sometimes you go to prayer and you're in there and while you're in there, you come out strong and you don't know what happened. I'm about to show you. Watch this. Then he said, verse 20, do you know why I've come? In other words, I, 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 I've given you all this and now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia and when I've gone forth the prince of Greece will come but I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth now there's the key see as long as you stay in the word these angels under the operation of the Holy Spirit will be ministering along with you as you release the Holy Spirit they will go with him because he is the Lord of hosts. God doesn't travel alone. You're not listening to me. God always comes with his crew. He, he is the Lord of hosts. Are you there? Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. This is not a Bible study, but you got to pray intelligently now because we got a short time to do a, a, a great work. Hebrews 1, uh, Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. Put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up. Hebrews 1, 13, 14. But to which of the angels has he ever said, sit at my right hand, tell him to make your enemies your footstool? Are they not? all what all the angels are they not all ministering spirits sent forth who sends them forth we do by the word of God are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation I want you to see I want you to look at me nobody nobody gets saved without the ministry of the Holy Spirit and angels. Nobody. Are you there? I said, are you there? Watch this. Let me, let me just give you, let me just give you a couple more witnesses. Go to, go to Matthew 4, 11. Let me, let me just go to Matthew 4, 11. Matthew 4, 11. This is after Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Look at verse number 11. It says, then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. What did they minister? Strength. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? Matthew 26, 52. Watch this. I'm doing this for a reason. Matthew 26, 52, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm not doing this to wow you with revelation. When they came to seize Jesus in the garden, when he's praying, it says, but Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place. I'm in verse 52, Matthew 26. Put your sword in its place for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you not think that I can not now pray to my father and he will give me 12 legions of angels? But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled? In other words, Jesus says, I cannot call the angels to deliver me because that would be against the word and the will of God. And angels won't work without the word. They will not work against the word. They will not work against the purposes of God. But once you know what the will of God is and what the purpose of God is, you have authority to release them to minister. Jesus said, I can call them. And they'd come, well, that's Jesus. No, that's a man anointed with the Holy Ghost. Are you in the room? Are you in the room? Let me, let me give you one more, one more witness, 
and we're going to pray Luke 22. Luke 22. 41. What? Woo! And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw and he knelt down and prayed. This is Jesus in the garden. God said, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Watch this. Don't miss this. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. What did Jesus just pray? Your will be done. And the angels came. <laughs> you don't, don't. <laughs> What's the Bible? And, and the angel came and so the moment Jesus submitted to the will of the Father and the as a, a moment he aligned himself with what God was doing the angels came and ministered to them lay your hand on your brother lay your hand on your sister and tell them from this night on you will be conscious of your angelic help you are never by yourself no not ever and when you know the word of God and you know the will of God you have the authority to release angels to minister spirits of wisdom and revelation spirits of understanding spirits of strength are now under your authority you new creation you as you stand on the word and release the purposes of God look at your neighbors and you and I tonight are going to release spirits of wisdom, revelation, understanding, and strength. Lay your hand on your brother. Tell him never again will you faint and grow weary. Never again are you to utterly fall. When you get weary, when you get tired, as long as you are doing the will of God, call the angel and tell them, strengthen me today. I release the ministry of angels to my own self. See, see don't get arrogant. Don't get sedated. Jesus said, I could call them if I needed. Touch your neighbor and say, so can I. So can you. Now tell them, get in the posture of prayer. We're about to release some angels. We're about to go into the heavens. God said he's expanding the territory of his holiness. Whoo! Whoo! God said the Holy Spirit ministry has to be released now on purpose by the church we're going to release that ministry and as we release that ministry tonight we are going to be conscious and aware that when God comes he comes with his company he comes with his crew and you and I have authority come on open your mouth if you want to walk walk if you want to get on your knees, get on your knees. If you want to lay out in the floor, lay out in the floor. This won't take long because now the arm, the axe is sharp. And the Bible says where the axe is sharp, not much force is needed. Come on, lift up your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're watching me live streaming, pray in the Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our voices tonight from this designated place, from this dedicated place. And God, we praise you and we worship you that you are Jehovah Nisi. You are the Lord, our victory. You are the God, hallelujah, who has given us victory in Christ Jesus. You are the God who has made us more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. Come on, play in the Spirit. Play in the Spirit. Let them hear me. Play in the Spirit. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Lord, we declare 
that you are our father we are your sons and your daughters in the earth and we take our place we take our stand as sons of yours in the earth and we declare in the name of Jesus that you are hallelujah the Lord who is Jehovah to sewer our strength you are the Lord strong and mighty you are the Lord mighty in battle uh, you are the Lord who has declared that your joy is our strength and we praise and magnify you that you are our strength oh God hallelujah and we bless you and we magnify you and we glorify you now that you are the Lord you are the God who is our sanctification you are the God who has sanctified us and separated us unto yourself that we might be used of you at your will and by your purpose in the name of Jesus come on open your mouth and pray God we magnify you tonight Whew, and we praise you tonight and we glorify you tonight Whew, that you are Jehovah Ro, you are the Lord our shepherd you are the God who leads us and guides us and tonight we thank you that you are leading and guiding us into truth we declare we are your sheep you are the great shepherd and we bless you and we praise you come on worship the Lord come on worship the Lord come on worship the Lord God we praise you Hallelujah. And we magnify that you are Jehovah. Shalom, the God of peace. And we magnify and bless you now that you are our peace. You said, Jesus, peace I leave with you. But my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives peace. You said that you give unto us and so we receive your peace and we declare no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that is risen in judgment against your people we declare it already condemned this is a part of our inheritance and we receive it tonight and we know that our righteousness comes from you come on worship just worship Father, you have revealed to us that you are reclaiming your dedicated places. You have revealed to us that you have determined to land in certain spots in this nation and in the nations of the earth there is a great awakening there is a great move of the spirit that you have purposed and God we declare we want to be a part of what you're doing and we take our place in the move of the spirit we take our place in this harvest and God, we declare, whew, we are laborers sent into your harvest. Come on, lift up your voice and say, Lord, I'm a laborer, send me. I want to be a part of what you're doing in this end harvest. Lord, you have declared to us that you are reclaiming your dedicated places and there are places where you are purposing significant moves of your spirit to arrest powers and principalities to pull down darkness and God we decree in the name of Jesus that we are one of those places and we thank you for more grace Come on, lift up your hands and ask the Lord for more grace. The Bible says he gives more grace. Ask 
Just give God more grace. Seva roka shanti, mando rande de borraka, robo shanti de vasi, rande de bari andorra bakisha, robo e, robo e sande de vaki, vando raba sheke, mando raba kata, ronda la vashe. Lord, you said in your word that this is the law of the temple as you're restoring it, as you are restoring your church, as you are restoring your places, as you are reclaiming them. You said this is the law. The whole mountaintop shall be most holy. And so God, we decree tonight that you are expanding your territory, the territory of holiness, the territory of righteousness, the territory of your designated place. You are expanding it. And so in the name of Jesus, we prophesy to the north. We prophesy to the south. We prophesy to the east. We prophesy to the west. Behold, the Lord comes. <laughs> Behold, the Lord comes. Behold, the Lord comes. The Lord of hosts. The God of the angel armies of heaven is invading the earth. And we say, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Come on, pray in the Spirit. There are battles going on for God's designated places. There are battles going on. For God's designated sons and daughters. Evo Rashande. Elabora Kasota. Rande Levora Maka. Lord, you said concerning my sons and the works of my hands, command ye me. In other words, you said if we are your children and we know what you have said, we are to put you in remembrance of your word. And God, you said. When the spirit of truth comes, you said he will convict of sin. You said he will convict of righteousness. You said he will convict of judgment. Now in the name of Jesus, I pray, whatever your word is being preached, whatever your word is being taught, I pray in the name of Jesus that in this place and dedicated places like it, that the spirit of God be released. Lord, you said he'd do it. But you said we were to pray. Whatever you said, we were to decree it. And so in the name of Jesus, we decree a fresh move of the Spirit of God in this hour, in this generation. Holy Spirit, convict of sin wherever men and women are not believing on Jesus. Wherever the gospel is preached, wherever the word is taught, Holy Spirit, convince men and women that they must be born from above, that they must believe on the finished work of Jesus. We will not compromise. We will not lay it down. We will not compromise. Jesus, you said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit. I pray from this place of grace. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit from this place. Convict in the north. Convict in the south. Convict in the east. Convict in the west. In the name of Jesus. That they do not believe on you. And bring them. Draw them. Change them. Transform them. Pray in the spirit. Holy Spirit. Convict of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Wherever and whenever the word is preached, whenever the word is taught, let men and women.
and see that there is a standard. Those who are wrestling in darkness, those who are bound in darkness, in the name of Jesus, I declare the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we release your ministry in the earth. Ronda the convict of judgment. Wherever the gospel is being preached, wherever the word of God is being taught, let men and women know that the devils who have bound them have been judged. That the yokes and the bondages that have incarcerated them have fallen to the ground. Let them see that the prison door is open and they can be free. We take authority over every spirit of darkness, every lying devil, every deceiving devil, every devil of fear. In the name of Jesus, loose God's sons and let them go. Loose God's daughters and let them go. Pray in the spirit. We release the spirit of revelation. Spirits of understanding. Spirits of knowledge. Spirits of strength. Angels of God. In the name of Jesus. We release your ministry. In the north. In the south. In the east. In the west. In the name of Jesus. Show up in bedrooms show up in kitchens show up in living rooms show up in hospital rooms in the name of jesus people pray we release eh, we release we release it is the time of harvest it is the time of dedication it is the time of restoration it is the time of revelation ministering angels go now to every individual ordained to salvation ordained to healing ordained to miracles ordained whew, to the grace of God ordained to receive mercy pray in the spirit Come on, people, pray right there in the spirit. Pray. I release angels into your month, into your days, into this month. And I prophesy all this month supernatural breakthroughs, supernatural revelation, supernatural understanding, supernatural strength flows to you. Pray in the spirit. Pastor, you're about to get a refreshing. Man of God, you're about to get a refreshing. Woman of God, you're about to receive a refreshing. The angels of God are coming to strengthen you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see it, Lord. I see it. Lord, you said that one of Satan's strategies in the end days would be to wear out the saints of the Most High. But we declare we will not grow weary. You said they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now we know how it happened. Woo! shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You said even the young men shall faint and grow weary and the youth shall utterly fall. 
But they that wait, they that minister to the Lord, they that put God in remembrance of his word, <laughs> there it is. I release angels to come and minister strength to you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Yes, God. God, we stand on our watch. We stand on our watch. Come on, pray in the spirit. Come on, lift up your hand, lift them, lift them, lift them, lift them. Father, whatever it is, whatever it is that we need to know, you said that we should pray, give us this day our daily bread and the most significant bread is the word of God and so I pray now come on lift your hands I pray for my brothers my sisters I pray for your sons and your daughters everywhere that in this month not one day will go by where what they need to know is not revealed to them I pray every piece of knowledge every piece of understanding every element of direction everything your sons and daughters need I thank you Lord God that as the manna came down every day every day the word being spoken over these lives will be heard, known, received. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, I receive every day the word that's coming to me. In this month, I declare there will not be a day what I don't have, what I need in knowledge in understanding do you believe that come on lift up your hands and just receive it God on this house on its leadership let your insight your wisdom your knowledge flow Come on, lift up your hands. <laughs> Say these words. Say, Lord, I receive everything we have prayed as done. Now I declare my sins are forgiven. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and you see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now just right there, right there, right there. If God puts his finger on something, just give it to him. His mercies are new every morning. See, to confess your sins means...
to say what God has said about them. And that is, they are remitted. That's what he said. That's what confessing your sins is. It's saying what God has said about them. Let's say this out loud. Say, Lord, I determine that I will allow no offense to enter into my heart. I forgive. I release anyone who comes against me in thought, word, or deed. I release them to you. You'll deal with that. I will not let it hinder the forces from flowing out of my heart now right there right there if you need to release something you need to release someone do it do it see in this covenant you are not forgiven because you forgive in this covenant you forgive because you have already been forgiven did you hear what I just said and when you get a revelation of how forgiven you are it's impossible for you to hold offense against anyone the Bible says we are to forgive just as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven us that's the new covenant Jesus said forgive so you will be forgiven he was finishing the old those were instructions for people who were in another covenant in the covenant you and I are in you don't forget you, you don't get forgiven by God because you forgive you are already forgiven and therefore you and I are to release what we've already been given to other people. Do you get it? Now say these words out loud. Say, Lord, I thank you that you preserve me, that you deliver me from every evil work. All this month, and you preserve me for your heavenly kingdom. That's a promise from the word of God. You know that, right? Paul said, and the Lord shall deliver you from every evil work and preserve you for his heavenly kingdom. Isn't that glorious? Every single morning, there is a rescue operation sent out for you to preserve you. Lift up your hands. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have granted us part and participation in your kingdom thank you yours is the kingdom but Jesus you said it's the father's good pleasure to give it to us and so we receive it say it out loud I receive the kingdom of God don't be afraid <laughs> Say, I receive the kingdom of God. See, Jesus said, fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Well, if he's given it, receive it. Jesus said to the Father, yours is the glory, but... The Father says, I've glorified you with the same glory Jesus had. 
Are you there? Jesus said we are to pray that the power belongs to God, and it does. But he said, behold, I've given to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I receive the kingdom. I walk in the glory. And I exercise the power, the authority that you have given me. It belongs to you, but you've given it to me. Thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. Now lay your hands upon your brother, lay your hands upon your sister, and just, if you pray in the Holy Ghost, if you're watching me live streaming, if you're by yourself, I want you to lift your hands. If you're next to somebody, lay your hands upon them. If you're in the tabernacle here, lay your hands upon somebody right now. And if you pray in the Holy Ghost for 60 seconds, I want you to pray in the Spirit over their month. I want you to pray the blessing of God, the increase of God, the favor of God, the strength of God, the wisdom of God, the revelation of God. Pray it for them right now over their whole month. Come on, open your mouth. Roboshanda, God, I pray and I set myself in agreement with your sons and your daughters all this month. They will flow in supernatural strength, wisdom. Revelation, favor, health, mm. about, about 15 or 20 minutes ago, healing began to flow in the body of someone watching and participating. Thank you for it, Jesus. There are also angels assigned to minister healing. The Holy Spirit does, but the Bible says the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. That's not a metaphor. The Bible says at the place of grace, an angel went down and stirred the water, and whoever got in first was made well. That was a minister of healing grace. Lay your hands upon yourself. Every time we come to this first fruit prayer meeting, I am commissioned to reach out to people who are to connect as a part of this prayer force and summon you to grab on to this anointing and flow with us, even if you're somewhere else in the world. There are prayer meetings like this happening all over the nation and all over the earth we're one of them God is calling his serious ecclesia his serious remnant to seasons of prayer and if the spirit of the Lord is leading you this way I want you to connect and every time we do this the spirit of the Lord has directed me number one to encourage you to be a part of this prayer force. You can do it online. You can do it here. And let us know you're connecting with this praying remnant that's called of God to stand 
on our watch. Now, one of the things the Spirit of the Lord said to me is that at least once every individual who connects with this prayer force, that I'm to encourage you to sow a thousand dollar seed in to this word, this work, and this anointing. May not be you, and if it's not, don't worry about it. But the Lord said, every time I do this, there are going to be men and women that he will summon to be a part of this grace and movement. If you are one of those, we're getting ready to sow in to the anointing, in to the word and the work of God. This anointing is already on your life, so you're not sowing to get it. It's present. But there are some things that the Spirit of God has purposed to escalate in your life, in mine, in your ministry, in mine, in your assignment, in your vision, in your purpose, in mine. And the Spirit of God is summoning you. So number one, connect right there on your computer screen, your smartphone. If you're becoming a part of this prayer force, let me know. And then I want you to get ready to sow into the anointing. Lay your hands upon yourself. I want every person under the sound of my voice who can in faith to get a seed and sow it of seven zero seventy dollars Now, there are about six of you that are watching me right now. The Spirit of God, there's about six of you one of you may be here, maybe one of you, but there's six of you listening to me, and the Spirit of God is speaking to you to sow that thousand dollar seed. There's a reason, and you know the reason. There are some of you, the Holy Spirit spoke to you already to sow before I said it, and you need to do it. I'm not afraid and I'm not ashamed to say what I know God has said. I've been doing this a long time. I know that voice. No games, no gimmicks, no manipulation. If you feel like you're being manipulated, by all means, disregard me. But if the Spirit of God is dealing with you, then I'm sent to you. I may not be sent to everybody, but I am sent to you. And something supernatural has been purposed. Now listen and hear me very clearly. There are more than six people in this room there are more than six people watching me so if you're not one of those then don't sweat it I want everybody else to get a seed if you can of 77 zero that's the impartation seed I want you to sow it you say well Bishop I don't have that then you just sow the very best you can the Bible says if there first be a willing heart it is accepted not according to what a man has not but according to what he has but I want you to sow as the Spirit of God directs you right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone. There's a donate button. There's a way for you to sow. I want you to sow and help us continue. God has plans. I haven't revealed everything. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me and showing me about what you and I together are to accomplish through this place in the next 12 months. But it is glorious and it is going to be exceedingly great as you and I participate and cooperate with what the Spirit of God is saying. So right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a donate button. If the Spirit of God is leading you to sow it, do it. Or you can text give CEMM to 41444. Just follow the prompts and give. My prayer ministers are ready to agree with you in prayer. 310 Many of you, as we were praying, the Spirit of God bore witness with some things in your spirit. Maybe you need the prayer of agreement. Call the number on the screen. And as you call, so whatever the Spirit of the Lord is directing you to, so mix your faith and your giving. One of the things I want to begin to incorporate in these times is getting your prayer requests sent in even while we're praying. And so I'm going to begin in these prayer force prayers to tell you at the outset to get your prayer requests in. And get them in my hand. We're going to put them in the national prayer altar. And we're going to be praying for you 
over the next 30 days. We're going to be believing God with you. 310-323-2600. Call that number. Do it now. If you get a busy signal, hang up and call again. They will be there until you finish calling because the connection is important. If you've got the Bishop will cut an app, you can give that way. If you're in the tabernacle and you're giving real quickly, if you're making out a check, make it payable to CEMM. If you're giving cash, use the envelope. If you want to do this on a bank or credit card, I've got some wonderful people ready to assist you. Just get up for where you are. Go there in the middle of the aisle. And so, as the Lord has directed you, don't wait, don't hesitate. Do what the Spirit of God is directing you to do. Whenever the Spirit of God is directing you to sow, there's a reason. And when you act on His Word, the manifestation will occur. In the name of Jesus, do it as the Spirit of God directs. Now, while you're doing that, while you're getting it ready, lend me one ear. Don't forget all this next week, actually beginning on Sunday and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of next week, I'm going to be uh, releasing three nights of financial breakthrough. This is something the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about back in the month of November of last year, December. I started sharing with my staff and then as we were fasting and praying in January, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, you, you need to do this and you need to do it in this month of March. There are certain things that are getting ready to occur in the earth. There are certain things that God has purposed for his children and you will let nothing, no matter what happens, I need you to hear me, but you need to be prepared. And the Lord has spoken to me about his desire in this season to increase and break you through in some financial areas. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, it's going to be online. It's not going to be live. It's going to, it's going to be live, but it's not going to be here in the tabernacle. It's going to be online only. And I want you to be a part of that. Um, and it will be a powerful time of breakthrough. You don't want to miss it. Now, if you have given, if you're ready to give, or if you have not finished giving yet, I just want you to lift up your hands. I want to pray. I want to pray over you. You watching me live streaming right now, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I set myself now in agreement with every person connecting with this anointing, this call to prayer. I pray the blessing, the grace of God over their lives, and I decree over this seed now, a supernatural harvest. I want you to say this out loud. Say, Lord, I receive. Come on, talk with some strength. Lord, I receive every need met. And I declare I am living in abundance in the overflow. And I boldly confess in favor, in finance, in things being added to me in things that money cannot buy I am blessed and I am more of a blessing in Jesus name Amen go ahead and give as the Spirit of God has directed you and let's give with joy unto the Lord Amen yes Lord
more time. Just gonna, just wanna pray. Come on, if you've given, stand on your feet, we're on our way. For all you've done, blessing. Put your hands together and bless the Lord, everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for your presence, for your favor, for the impartation of your spirit. Now, in the name of Jesus, we pray a hedge of protection in the north, south, east, and west around this people their families, their households, their goods, and all they have on every side, we declare that everything their hands touch prospers, that they continue to increase in the land which you give them. And we boldly confess that the angels of the Lord encamp round about us, and they deliver us, for we are those that fear the Lord. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. We'll see you by the grace of God on Sunday.